Hello and welcome. Pastor John here. Um, just want to welcome you again here to our um, Bible uh, study series. We're going through all the books of the Bible and today we're going to look at a passage selected from the first book of Chronicles. So we're still in the Old Testament and this is the first book of Chronicles. So please open your Bible and go to the first book of Chronicles in the Old Testament and turn to chapter 29 verses 18 to 19. It's going to be our reading today. So that's the first book of Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 29 verses 18 to 19. And here we read, O Lord, the God of our ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees, and to do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made these preparations. God bless reading of his word. A matter of the heart. A matter of the heart. So uh, the background here is that we have um, King David praying here. And he's praying uh, to God about the temple that is um, going to be built by uh, his son uh, Solomon and not David. And the reason for that is because God said in uh, previous Jesus and First Chronicles um, um, 28 uh, verses 1 to 7. I'm going to read, read, the, um, read this to you. So 1 Chronicles 28 verses 1 to 7 is David here give, giving the instructions to Solomon. David summoned all the officials of Israel to Jerusalem the leaders of the tribes, the commanders of the army div divisions, the other generals and captains, the overseers of the royal property and livestock, the palace officials, the mighty men, and all the other brave warriors in the kingdom. David rose to his feet and said, My brothers and my people, it was my desire to build a temple where the Ark of the Lord's Covenant God's footstool could rest permanently. I made the necessary preparations for building it, but God said to me, You must not build a temple to honor my name, for you are a warrior and have shed much blood. Yet the Lord, the God of Israel, has chosen me from among all my father's family to be king over Israel forever, for he has chosen the tribe of Judah to rule and from among the families of Judah, he chose my father's family. And from among my father's sons, the Lord was pleased to make me king over all Israel. And from among my sons, for the Lord has given me many, he chose Solomon to succeed me on the throne of Israel and to rule over the Lord's kingdom. He said to me, Your son Solomon will build my temple and its courtyards, for I have chosen him as my son, and I will be his father. And if he continues to obey my commands and regulations, as he does now, I will make his kingdom last forever. Amen. God bless you, this word. So we have here the link to, uh, to David's prayer in um, uh, 1 Chronicles 29, 18-19. O Lord... The God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, make your people always want to obey you. See to it that their love for you never changes. Give my son Solomon the wholehearted desire to obey all your commands, laws, and decrees, and to do everything necessary to build this temple for which I have made these preparations. God bless you, in this word. So um, what we want to uh, see here is that we have 
um, uh, David, King David praying first in verse 18 for the people, the Israelites in verse 18. And he's also praying in verse 19 specifically for his son Solomon. Um, because um, as we just read, God said to King David, you shed too much blood. And um, so yeah, you're not going to be building the temple, but your son is. His son Solomon, which he does, and um, uh, it happens later on. But um, the goal is to follow God and follow God's um, instructions. So it's, it's a matter of the heart. So David's prayer invokes and tells us about uh, his heart bent towards God. So he prays for the people and for his son, that God blesses uh, them and him. And um, also um, to uh, that his son also follows the Lord wholeheartedly. Right? So the goal is to build God's house, that is God's temple. And we see here, in, we'll go back in the Old Testament a little bit, um, to Exodus chapter 36, verse 10, um, God gives precise instructions, exact details. So we read, Five of these curtains were joined together to make one long curtain, and the other five were joined to make a second long curtain. Temple is important because it is the dwelling place of God among the Israelites. All right? So that's why the temple was important, and that's why God um, instructed David and thereafter also Solomon to build the temple um, as a so he could dwell, God would dwell uh, within his holy presence among the Hebrew people. So um, when you when we're going to flip over, we're going to go a bit further now in time and just ahead. And you may have heard, I mean, we always think about Jesus, right, as like loving, caring, gentle, humble, uh, um, and, and he is. But there is an incident uh, in the New Testament where uh, Jesus um, expresses um, uh, himself and, uh, as God in the flesh a little bit differently. And this is often referred to as um, Jesus clearing the temple, right? So his father's house. So we're going to read in John, that's the Gospel of John, chapter 2. If you want to read along, I encourage you, open your Bible. I hope you already have and follow along here. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 22. And we read... It was nearly time for the Jewish Passover celebration. So Jesus went to Jerusalem in the temple area. He saw merchants selling cattle, sheep, and dove for sacrifices. He also saw dealers at tables exchanging for money. Jesus made a whip from some ropes and chased them all out of the temple. He drove out the sheep and cattle scattered the money changers' coins over the floor and turned over their tables. Then going over to the people who sold doves, he told them, Get these things out of here. Stop turning my father's house into a marketplace. Then his disciples remembered this prophecy from the scriptures. Passion for God's house will consume me. But the Jewish leaders demanded, What are you doing? If God gave you authority to do this, show us a miraculous sign to prove it. All right, Jesus replied, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. Destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What? they exclaimed. It has taken 46 years to build this temple and you can rebuild it in three days. But when Jesus said this temple... He meant his own body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered he had said this, and they believed both the scriptures and what Jesus had said. So, Jesus' resurrection here initiates the new temple, and that is his own body as the temple, the body of Christ. So, um, we see here um, Jesus expressing his anger for people um, really trying to make a buck off of God or 
trying to trying to make you make a dollar off of God um, without having you know proper reverence for him right I mean so that's one of the things here um, where Jesus expresses um, God's um, or, or hints at God's divine wrath and also uh, jealousy because people were worshiping for all the wrong reasons right they were going through rituals or uh, you know traditions and uh, uh, really, really, as he says, Jesus is turn, turning the place into a marketplace. And that's not what the Bible is about. That's not what church is all about. right? Church, church is basically the body of Christ. Us, all of us as believers, form, we shape the body of Christ. And that's important to understand. Church is not a building. right? Church is not a building. Church is you and me. As Christians, as believers and followers of Jesus, we uh, make up the individual parts of the body of Christ. All right, so it's very important to understand uh, what the Bible tells us here. So, how does all of this apply to you? How does it apply to you? So, what does it mean to have a heart bent towards God, as we just saw in the David's passage? So, ask yourself, what can God? accomplished through you with with a heart bent towards God towards Jesus what does Jesus want to do in your life do you want to know are you curious do you want to find out so you want to obey him if you do you want to obey him love him and follow his commands God can and will reveal his plan purpose and timing for your life um, God can and will reveal his plan, purpose, and timing for your life. However, it is a matter of the heart. And we read this in Psalm 51, verse 10. Psalm 51, verse 10, we read, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a loyal spirit within me. May God bless you and keep you. Amen.